This is the Climate Classroom with Miss Bridget and Miss Victoria. Let's think about the Earth. When you look at it from far away, you can already notice some really cool things. You can see the blue of the oceans. You can see green from the plant life and white at the poles. You can even see humans, too. Take a look at the Earth at night. You can see light scattered across the globe because of human activity. But humans have affected the Earth in many other, less visible ways. We now know that people contribute to releasing large amounts of greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases are little particles in the atmosphere. You can't see these gases, just like you can't see the oxygen you breathe, but they play a large role in the climate of the Earth. In order to understand the effect of these molecules on the climate, let's consider the Earth's atmosphere. The atmosphere is all the air that surrounds the Earth. It is 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen. These elements exist as N2 and O2, which usually do not react with other molecules in the atmosphere because they are very stable bonded to themselves. The last 1% is made up of many different kinds of gases. One of these very important gases is carbon dioxide, or CO2. You probably know about carbon dioxide from its natural processes. Humans inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Plants do the opposite, taking up carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen. But what does it mean to have an atmosphere of mostly nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide? Our Earth gets all of its energy from the sun. When the rays of light reach the atmosphere, some of it is deflected back into space, but most of it reaches the surface. Some of the light is also reflected at the Earth's surface, and the rest is absorbed into the planet. This absorbed energy heats the Earth, which is why the sand at the beach or pavement can sometimes burn your feet. It has absorbed a lot of energy from the sun. To cool off, the Earth releases a different form of energy known as infrared radiation. With just nitrogen and oxygen in the atmosphere, all this energy would escape back to space and the Earth's surface would be much colder. But greenhouse gases, like carbon dioxide, interact with this infrared radiation and keep it in the atmosphere. This energy heats the surface of the Earth, making it warm enough for us to live on. So greenhouse gases, at natural levels, are very important for keeping the Earth warm and habitable. The most common greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide, but other gases like methane, or CH4, and nitrous oxide, or N2O, also work the same way to heat the Earth's surface. They're called greenhouse gases because they act like the glass in a greenhouse, which allows light in and heats the room by trapping some of this energy. However, since the time of the Industrial Revolution, people have begun to release lots of extra carbon dioxide into the air by burning fossil fuels. Fossil fuels are coal, oil, and natural gas. These are limited resources buried in the earth that we drill or dig up and burn to produce energy. We burn fossil fuels to do things like power our electricity, drive cars, and to make and provide a lot of the services and goods we are used to today. Greenhouse gases are also released by deforestation and farming practices. All of these extra greenhouse gases mean that more energy will stay in the atmosphere and warm the surface of the earth. But hey, I kind of like when it's warm. Who cares if the Earth is a few degrees warmer? Well, it turns out that just a few degrees of warming can change a lot of things. One of the most obvious effects that we can see and understand easily is the melting of ice very rapidly, especially at the poles. You may have heard of this before because this has led to the loss of habitat for polar bears. Beyond the habitat destruction, the melting of the polar ice caps is also adding lots of water to the oceans. The water is also expanding because the oceans receive a lot of direct sunlight input since it covers 70% of the Earth's surface. The oceans absorb this energy, become warmer, and expand. The addition and expansion of water in the oceans has caused the sea level to rise. Levels are predicted to continue to rise in the future, which could seriously impact coastal communities. Also, when carbon dioxide dissolves into the oceans, it causes them to become more acidic which affects many marine species. Finally, global temperature increases will probably cause something referred to as global weirding. This refers to the idea that climate change will cause a pattern of intense and destructive weather across the globe. Some areas will have increased rain, storms, and flooding. Others will receive significantly less water and experience drought. 
Dangerously high winds and natural disasters are expected to increase in frequency and intensity. These weather patterns may be very destructive and even take lives. To prevent and lessen such extreme and undesirable outcomes, serious changes must be made across the world to reduce the release of greenhouse gases. Lawmakers must pass laws that will encourage these changes. Some ideas are to put a cap on the carbon dioxide that businesses can produce and gradually lower it in the future and to add a tax on carbon. We must also start to use alternative, renewable energies like solar, wind, and water energies because these sources of energy will never run out and do not release greenhouse gases. You can do a lot to make changes too. Things like turning the lights off when not in use, using less water, and using public transportation instead of a car are all very positive changes that you can personally make. You can also talk to your family and friends about climate change to see what they know and maybe what they don't know. Talk about what you've learned. If you are interested or have a question, there are lots of places that you can learn more about climate change and other crucial environmental issues. One great source you can check out is www.epa.gov slash climate students. Begin to think critically about how humans and the things we do impact our environment. Let's try to be considerate of the earth and learn how to better take care of our home.